Hi, my name's Dale, and welcome to Metal Tips and Tricks. And this is Tool Talk. And Tool Talk is my, well, thing about when I find something cool or an interesting tool that I want to show off. And today is, well, a whole bunch of stuff I bought from a gentleman by the name of Warren. Warren lives in um, Oxford, Georgia, which is about 25 miles east of downtown Atlanta. Downtown Atlanta. I met him at a swap meet north of here about an hour and a half, so a lot of driving. I bought a bunch of stuff from him at the swap meet, a bunch of end mills. And he said, oh, you got one more of this stuff? I got tons of it. Well, he sure did. So I just want to go through this whole pile of stuff with you guys just to see what I found, the fun. Um, it's an interesting mix of stuff. It's kind of all over the board with different types of hold downs, fixtures, tooling. It's, it's really kind of a fun find. It's also fun to negotiate. Um, well, actually, it's really kind of tough to negotiate with Warren. Warren, he and I got talking. And, well, I think three hours passed, and all of a sudden we go, oh, I'm supposed to buy some tools, and you're supposed to sell them to them. And we kind of had a little laugh. And we had a negotiated deal. It was kind of actually hard for both of us because we'd become such good friends that, well, I didn't want to steal it from him. And he wanted to kind of give it to me. So we had to find a medium ground. And I think we did. You know, the tough thing with any tooling is, especially this stuff, we've got a lot of rust. I don't know how bad it is. So I either bought a box of scrap metal or um, a box of really great tooling. It's always a gamble. So let's start out with, boy, I'm not sure. I've got other stuff on the ground, so I'm kind of looking at it. It's, it's kind of like that when you get to give out gifts for the first time under the Christmas tree, and you're looking at all the gifts and who you want to give them to, and I'm kind of like, well, this is my answer to Christmas to just kind of show you around. Actually, I know what I'm going to start with. Let's start with this. This is a fantastic tool holder. Let's see, what is it? JB Progress 1912. Great little tool holder. Um, it's interesting that it has a round tip in here, not square, and I don't know what that is. But you see this design here? This is about relieving the shock when a bit gets bound in. This will actually give at the right point. And we'll go over that someday in more detail. Got a bunch of Armstrong tool holders. Don't even know yet. I haven't even gone through this. We got lefts, we got rights. Um, oh, those are nice. This is a pretty nice setup. Boring bar holders, unique boring bar holders, more a straight tool holder, 15 degree, 7 degree, boring bar. Um, more tool holders. Boy, I'm not even sure what I've found yet. <laughs> More boring bar holders. Well, this is interesting. This is off a screw machine. Interesting. Here's a great boring bar. Fantastic. Here, I pulled this out. This is kind of that same design. This is for cutoffs. And you know how when you're cutting something off and that bit just wants to chatter down on you? Well, this helps prevent that. The problem is it's on the wrong side for most of what I do. When I do cutoffs, it's usually cutting off right next to the chuck, not out to the right-hand side by the tailstock, but still really fun. OK, let's keep going. I'm going to go through this as fast as I can. How is that for a boring bar? I am perplexed by this. It's fantastic, obviously homemade. I'm wondering if this person didn't set up different bits to come in and have a step in a hole. Interesting idea. Reamer with a Morse taper. I think that is a little well used. Um, more Armstrong. Here's another, uh, I think this is a number three. Nope. 
number four, uh, you can attach a mill end to this. Excellent. Here's a smaller version. Looks like another mill end. Wow, just kind of fun stuff. More boring bar holders. Here's an interesting ream. What is that? Is that a number four? Yep. A number four ream. Boring bar. Sleeve. Another great, this is just a beautiful tool holder. It actually, what happened to that one? You know, I'm going to bet it was made by the same guy. There's just a certain quality to it. It just says that's, that might be possible. Um, I'm going to assume these are high speed. They don't look high speed, but they could be. Nice little sleeve. Here's a lantern tool post. Excellent. This is kind of fun. It's like Christmas, isn't it? Well, it is for me. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Okay, we got some slitting saws. It looks like a one inch bore. Three of them, three different thicknesses. Oh, here's one I got to see. Isn't this cool? This is a homemade uh, boring head. Uh, set up for a 5.8 um, collet, I mean a 5.8 collet, an R8 collet. I got an idea for this, I think you guys will like, but that'll be for another show. Mill end. This is interesting. I want to say this is a dog um, to hold onto a shaft when you're turning, but it has a keyway in it. I've never seen that before. It's kind of interesting. Here's a nice little set of clamps for the mill. Um, it's incomplete, but by looking over here, I might be able to fill in some gaps. And I'm kind of holding these out. I just like them. Here is a Jacob's Chuck 34 half inch capacity. Um, you yeah, know, I got a bunch of chucks like this. Face plate, um, probably inch and a half. And what would that be, a 10 or an 8 pitch? 8 probably. Some. Oh, these are tapered. Let me come back here a minute. Not quite, but these are a ream. Oh, a nice little stone. And they're tapered, and it looks like it's for a number five Morse taper. Interesting. Hmm. Let's see, we got some grinding stones, diamond grinding stones, but with a half inch, or maybe that's three quarter inch hole. Yeah, probably half inch. There's just some junk in there. Two of these. It'll be interesting to see what we can do with that. Got some carborandum stones. Brand new. Inch wide. This says fine. You know, I don't know if these numbers stand for anything on these. I looked at them earlier. Usually that describes hardness. Oh, it says a C, an F. Well, usually what I should say, the number should go the grit and the hardness. So, I don't know. We'll look into it later. I've been needing some new carborandum stones for my grinders. This will be a great addition. To actually have two stones the same size on a grinder would be a first for me. Okay, I've been kind of holding this one out. This will be interesting. Rust, as we know, is not our friend in the machine, machining world. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this chuck to survive. Um, I haven't put a key to it, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to put some time in on it. This is a buck chuck. It's a six inch. And 
it's the true align. This could be a fantastic find. The checks on it, um, they're worn out, they're shot. I'm gonna have to replace those. If this works, it'll be a great deal. But you know, you never know what's gonna happen. So this is gonna be a fun box. Um, oh, I've got another Morris Taper ream. So this is hold downs. And, well, it's got a couple leaves in it. Let's just pull a couple things out to see what we can uh, see. A lot of hold downs. Hey, that's nice. These are set up for screw machines, so when you put a piece of steel in, the rollers will keep it in alignment. It will give you a consistent diameter where it's not moving around. Problem is this is, yeah, that's a three-quarter inch shank. My hardinge over there is five-eighths. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to turn that down or not. I have one, It'd be nice to have two. So I think, interesting. Let's dig down here a little bit further. Oh, this might be fun. All right, now that is a hold down. I don't have any of this particular design. I hope there's two in here. Well, like I said, there is some rust in here. Looks like it should be for a wood lathe. Or it could be a banjo for a metal lathe. But it looks like something you'd put a tool rest in and have it on a wood lathe. Oh, good. So I do have two of those. Boy, are they rusty. Okay, so this is just kind of not seen any other big surprises. This, uh, this definitely was a great surprise. All right, let's put this one down. Boy, these weigh a lot. They're rusty, but these, you can, you can recover those. Okay, I got two buckets over here and a big box over here. Let's, yeah, we'll just start dumping things out. All right, more screw machine stuff. Now, so here is a drill center. And you see how these are set up. You just set up a bunch of raw stock like this. And you put in a posi like a six position holder like this, and you'd put these in. Instead of using drill chucks, you just use raw material. So I'd set this up. I would drill this out for a different type of cutter or drill bit or whatever, and I could just click through. The other thing is I can change the length of these. And the other thing is they fit this. That's excellent. So a couple dead centers with stuff on them. Cool. I have no clue what this cross slide goes to. Um, I haven't, you know, cleaned it up yet to see what it is. The graduations here are beautiful. They're good and deep. This could be from a very quality machine. But this is confusing, that there's a, uh, a rack here. So I don't know. If anybody knows what this is for or which lathe it's for, I'd really like you to send me a note. I'd appreciate that. OK. So.
so we got some carbide tip cutters here. Well, they've been pretty used up. Ground in all sorts of configurations. Well, there's a nice one. That one's possible. That one's still got some life. Here's a possibility. Funny grind. I mean, I understand what the guy was trying to do, but uh, a little funny. Oh, here's a new one. That's nice. Okay. I use a lot of these carbides, so I'm really happy to have them. Okay, another small box and a big box. Slitting saw, homemade arbor. The arbor is aluminum. Cool. Carbide, some R8 collets. Here's a half inch MSC. Rusty, half inch, half inch, half, oh, five eighths. Good. Smaller, okay. So some interesting R8 collets there. Rust is your enemy, especially on something like that. Excellent. I needed another set of, of dressing wheels. Random bearing. Froze up. No good. Okay, let's just lift up this whole box. How's that? For a cut off, too bad. There's a big chunk out of that tooth. Interesting. I don't know if I can't replace that. Well, that's for another time. Boring bar. You know, there's quite a few of these reams that are tapered. I'm going to have to do some research. These might, you know, there's all sorts of tapers for drill bits, for, gosh, all sorts of machines. Every company seems to have their own taper. This might have value. You know, here's another one that's tapered. This one here's tapered, tapered, I don't know. Another great boring bar, small boring bar. Oh, something in a box. Brand new ream, happy. So I think my brother Terry's gonna be getting a care box soon. Some little knob. Steel cutters. And the rest of this stuff. Here's a stare at something for a holding, holding some sort of gauge. There's different types of cutters in here. You know, are any of them any sharp? You know. Bunch of small drill bits. So just kind of some fun little stuff in there. Now for the reason I went to see Warren. He had drill bits. And guys, I love drill bits. I don't know what it is. I've got drawers of them. But really what I'm trying to do is get a complete set of Morris taper from one, two, three, and four tapers. And I'm pretty close. So I'm hoping that these are going to fill in some of my gaps. Always scares me to find um, rusty drill bits like this, but I have successfully recovered drill bits in this type of shape. And what I do is I look for, like this one here, it's got some pitting. Um, it may survive. We're more interested in this than this as long as it doesn't compromise, you know, how round this is. The other thing is we want to look for on these bits is we don't want any of these to look like they've rotated when they've been used because this will scratch the interior bore of your tailstock and it actually starts to transfer these scratches to that 
and causes a cancer that gets spread throughout your drill bits. If, this, if these are damaged, just throw them away because it's cheaper in the end. So most of these look like, here's a number one, number ones, twos, here's a three. So, well, instead of pulling them all out, I'll just kind of put it right here so you can see what we're looking at. So, you know, it's not, it's not too bad. I actually pulled this one out and just kind of did a quick wire brush on it. Came out pretty good. I do see some pitting, which concerns me. Um, but I'll tell you, that edge right there is sharp. And another thing is, don't throw your drill bits in a bucket like this, guys. Um, these things are all rubbing together. That was horrible. I'm gonna put these back down and let's see how many drill bits I can doll. So, I don't know how many, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, 70 drill bits maybe, not really sure. Now we got some more reams. Let's see, here's a, so these are all, there's a power tapping handle. Let's see, looks in nice shape, feels sharp. It's a dual 5 sixteenths minus 500, 5 thousandths. Hmm, press fit. A couple more. Now, this type of ream, I gotta be honest, I don't know anything about. I've never used them. I've never seen a head like that. So it'll be, I need to do some research and find out what the detail is about that. So here we go, more reams, all Morris taper. Oh, there's two power. So hopefully, and reams are not like drill bits. Drill bits, there's a lot of just set sizes and you know. When it comes to reams, a set of reams is one that's over by thousands, one that's on, one that's under by thousands. So you can have hundreds and hundreds of reams. So you never have enough. When I see them available, I just buy them, even if I already have one of that size, because more than likely one's gonna be a thousandths more than the other. Here we go, some more. So if it's just kind of stacking up, there's three or four more left in there. You know, this was kind of an odd uh, find. Whenever I come across these and great people like Warren, I just kind of buy everything. Um, I just give, give me a lot price and see what happens. It's a lot more fun for me. It's a lot more fun in the go negotiations. And like I said, I made a great friend out of Warren. Hopefully we'll get together later on in the future and just he'll s s teach me some more stuff about cars. He does a lot of sheet metal stuff. Fantastic restorations. He had a great GTO over there. He was doing a 57 Chevy pickup for his wife, which I thought was kind of excellent that his wife would that, want that. And he put a Camaro front end in it. So he literally had to cut off the front of the frame and weld a Camaro front end on it. And then we're talking about the suspension, not the hood assembly. Chiss did a fantastic job. That truck is going to be one beautiful driving machine. I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, you know, tool find. It's been really kind of fun to show it off to you. And you know, just go out there, find this stuff, meet some new people, a lot of fun. So until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.